Hi everyone. For today's book review, we're going to be going under the sea, and we're going to be checking out Better Somme, Italian Submarines in the Battle of the Atlantic from 1940 to 1945. The Battle of the Atlantic is synonymous with the German U-boats, and it is often forgotten that Italian submarines also contributed to the war effort. And this book is an extensive English language look at the Italian submarines that were involved, the crews, the commanders, and each mission that was undertaken during the time that Italy was part of the Axis. This book also looks at the various successes, failures, challenges, and some of the more uh, longer range and exotic missions that German submarines took. It's great that over the last decade, a great deal of revisionism has taken place and Italy's contribution to the Second World War has been reevaluated and put into proper context. The earlier arrogant attitudes of them just being bad, thankfully, in at least academic circles, is being dismantled and we're getting proper, good, contextual, analytic texts that put the Italian war effort into its proper context. The performance of the Air Force has been reevaluated with the book called Courage Alone. The tank battles that the Italians fought in North Africa has been properly analyzed in Iron Hull's Black Hearts. <clears throat> and the war in the Mediterranean, particularly the naval contribution that the Italian Navy did has also been reevaluated and analyzed in books such as Battle for the Middle Sea, or Struggle, sorry, for the Middle Sea. And this book by Marek Subsky is part of that wave of historical and academic inquiry looking at how Italians fought with a more clinical, analytical, and objective perspective. And it's refreshing because we can truly understand their struggles, their successes, and their failures. And it's all recognized. Italian submarines in the Second World War managed to sink 110,000 tons of enemy shipping. And while this does pale in comparison to the contribution of the U-boats, it is worth noting that Italian submarines, their crew, and the entire doctrine that they were trained for was very different from what they ended up uh, participating in. And this book explains it all quite clearly and in depth. For example, Italian submariners were taught and actively pursued the strategy of sinking their ships using their guns, very much in the style of the First World War. It was only gradually as the war evolved that they started to use their torpedoes more and more. It is also worth noting that their torpedoes were terribly defective and many ships uh, were saved simply due to the fact that those torpedoes just misfired. <clears throat> this book goes into extreme depth regarding each mission that was undertaken and it is probably the most extensive and detailed look of the Italian submarine arm um, in English in their participation in the Second World, sorry, in the Battle of the Atlantic. So the bulk of the book is texts, however, there are two photo sections which you're now you are now seeing up there in the corner. Some of them are almost photocopy quality in terms of their clarity, but you have a selection of photos showing life inside the Italian submarines, some of the extreme conditions. Italian submarines uh, were trained up in Gdynia or Gottenhaven in icy conditions and they went as far as the Azores and beyond. So they experienced tropical and icy conditions. The photos highlight life on board the submarines or as the Italians refer to them as the sommergibile. And in the second photo section, we get beautiful profiles of the various submarine classes, as well as more photos of the submarines themselves. <clears throat> this book goes through methodically 
the technical characteristics of the submarines, the autobiographies of various commanders, and then the bulk of the book goes straight through and discusses in extreme detail each voyage that was undertaken by each submarine during the Battle of the Atlantic. And we hear about their many successes, their many failures, and some surprising acts of humanity. Their behavior tends to be more reflective of how submarine commanders behaved in the First World War. But it is also worth pointing out that this behavior was the exception and not the rule. But it is still interesting to read these accounts of a touch of humanity in the middle of an extremely brutal war. In terms of successes, the largest ships that the Italian submarines sank included the 1922 Empress of Canada by Canadian Pacific Lines. That ship was over 20,000 tons. And uh, of equal size and vintage, the Orense of the English Orient Lines. They also severely damaged the Royal Mail ship, which was converted into an armed merchant cruiser, Astorius, and they also managed to uh, severely damage a Canadian destroyer. <clears throat> For its objective tone and its extreme level of detail in English, this book should be commended, as well as part of the wider series that this book belongs to. Marek Sobsky has done a fantastic job of compiling a great deal of Italian language references combining together and then putting them into this English language reference. The translation does sometimes uh, struggle and some words do tend to appear out of context. Honestly, all this book really needed is just a, just a simple read through by another English speaker and some of the terminologies could have been tweaked. But all in all, it is easily readable and perfectly clear. And for its extreme level of detail and accessibility to English-speaking audiences, I give this book four captain's hats. If you are interested in submarines, submarine warfare, and in particular the Italian contribution to submarine warfare in the Second World War, then this book will be a fantastic reference guide for you. It is revealing, it is illuminating, it is fascinating and interesting to read, and you will find details in this book that have not been covered in other more generic reference sources. So if your interest is under the sea, and in particular Italian warfare in the Battle of the Atlantic, then highly recommended to check this out. And if there are any other naval combat books that you uh, would like reviewed or have an interest in, let me know in the comments below, and I'm sure if I have them in my library, I'll gladly review them for you. So until next time, enjoy and happy reading everyone!